I'm recording this a few days before Christmas, during the period we refer to as Advent. Advent meaning coming or arrival. And that is the coming or arrival of Jesus Christ when he was born in Bethlehem. Countless children and quite a few adults, myself included, look forward to the time when we can go and get our Advent chocolate. We have these little reusable stockings which we fill with our favourite chocolates each year. I want to think, though, what was it like before he came? What was it like to live in those days before Jesus Christ came into this world? In the land of Israel, it was a difficult time. The Romans were occupying the land, and that was very difficult for the Jews to accept. They had to pay taxes to a foreign nation. They used to be under the rule of their own kings, but the people, the Jews, had disobeyed God, had sinned against God, and that had led to conquest by foreign nations. If you want to get a sense of what it was really like, you can find that in Isaiah in chapter 9. Verse 2 says this, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, on them a light has shined. They were walking in darkness. That is, they, they were ignorant of God. They were without God. Where he said that they, they were sinners, they'd broken God's laws and rules. They were under, therefore, the, the shadow of death. Death, after all, is the consequence of sin. Isaiah also tells us in the same passage that the nation had grown, but there was no joy. And there were oppressors, there was battles, and there was burnings. But he's also referred to the great light, and that is talking about the Lord Jesus. The fact that they were walking in darkness, then they would seen a great light, and that light is the Lord Jesus Christ. It goes on to say, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, that's referring to before Christ was born, before he came into this world. But I want to think as well, not before Christ came into the world, but before and after Christ came into people's lives individually. For example, take Paul. Now, Paul, before he knew Jesus Christ, he was a very well-educated person, well-born. He was by the measure of the day, a good person. But he realised that without Christ, his life, and his words, was rubbish. It was worthless. He says this, Yet indeed, I count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. So all the things that he had before he said that they, they were just rubbish in comparison to knowing Christ. He also wrote about a life before Christ, that is a life without Christ, to the Ephesians uh, as a group of Christians who lived in uh, Ephesus. And it says this, they, they were walking, they were living their lives like the rest of the world. They, they were fulfilling desires. They were pleasing themselves. They were children of wrath. They were under the judgment of God, that means. They were under the shadow of death, and they had no hope. But then Paul was writing to a people who, like him, had come to know Christ, and Christ had come into their lives. And now they, they had a before Christ, and now they had an after Christ as well, when they had accepted Christ as their Lord and as their Saviour. And after Christ had came into their lives, personally, they were made alive. They were no longer under that shadow of death. They, they knew the kindness of God. They knew the forgiveness of God. And now they walked to please God, not themselves. What was the difference? Well, the difference was that they had come to know Christ and that they had been saved by his grace. People who have asked God, save them from their sins, can look back on their life and see a before and after. What about you? Are you at that point in your life before Christ? Will there ever be a point where Christ will come into your life and you'll be able to look back and see that before and after? You might be listening to what I'm saying and you might have heard how he loved you and he died for you, but 
for there to be a real before and after, for Christ to be really with you, to save you from your sins, well, that's what he did when he came to this world and he was born in Bethlehem, but he went to die on the cross. He did that to save people from their sins. But to that to be true of you, you need to ask him. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, we read this. The Lord Jesus is speaking and says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. He's not going to force his way into your life, but he's asking. He wants to come into your life. He wants to forgive you your sins. He wants to be with you. But then the question then is this, then, as we close. Which are you? Are you with Christ or without Christ? If you're without, you're still at that before stage. You have no hope of heaven and you're still in that darkness. But with Christ, if you can look back at before and after, then you'll know your sins forgiven and a certain hope of life in heaven with him.